Uh, okay, so let's hit record, and then let's go find Jonathan again. Jonathan, uh, privately uh, post in the chat to me an email address where you would like to receive a game. Uh, this is the last game of the term. I'll try and make it a good one. How's that? Mm -mm -mm. Let's look at May 2020. Come on. Okay. Uh, okay, Jonathan, would you like a strategy game? One of the best strategy games ever? Uh, actually. Uh, either that or... Um, looks like... A, a deck building game strategy game or deck building game strategy game okay wait do I already own this wait I may not give it to you if I don't already own it pretty sure I already own it Uh, uh, enemy. Do I have it? Let's go to the store page. Yes, I do already own it, but there's some other, there's a reinforcement pack. Wait, I got. Mm, what is this? Let me. Okay, let me see. Uh, oh, choose this and receive. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not going to give this to you because it it has DLC in it that um, that I don't own and I want it because it's one of the best games ever. Um, okay. So let's find you a strategy game then. I'm going to go back. We're going to go to another month. It would have been XCOM 2. See what I'm saying? Um, mm -mm -mm. Okay, that's October. No purchases. Oh, while I'm playing around here. Uh, I got an email that says only 28% of the people in this class have uh, filled out um, their, uh, um, what do you call it? Their, uh, evaluations of the class, you know, where you say I'm horrible or I'm good. Um, so, uh, please, please, I'm going to, I think we're, we're not going to go the full two hours today, but I could be wrong. Um, but if we have time at the end of the class, I'm going to sign off and you should take that time and go find that email and reply to it. Uh, okay. I am going to give, uh, you. This is not a strategy game. It looks like a side scroller beat em up kind of thing, Jonathan. So good for you. Uh, okay, let's copy this. Uh, 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 gift to friend, you are now my friend. Send an email, control V, send email. You are now the uh, proud owner of Death's Gambit. 
Uh, oh, this this looks. That's that's yeah, it's got it's got some very good pixel art, and there's some new DLC coming out soon that should like totally revamp the game too. That's Gambit. Yes. Okay. Cool. Um, see the like I already own XCOM two. I was going to give you XCOM two, but it comes with the um two DLCs that I don't own and I can't like separate them. Um, so it's reinforcement pack. I already have War of the Chosen, but I don't have uh, the reinforcement pack or I guess there's something called Shen's Last Gift and Alien Hunters. I don't know. Um, and I have, uh, I honestly, I have not played uh, XCOM 2 yet at all um, but I played XCOM 1 to death like many like replayed it three times so um, so uh, please 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 um, go and uh, uh, fill out the evaluation form um, next uh, to, 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 I have a question from, um, uh, I have a question about, wait, wait, wait. There were a couple questions, man, this, okay. Courtney wants to know if I can make it on canvas so I can submit multiple links. I thought you could, um, Let's go look. Uh, so assignments, final, final and real level. Let's edit that puppy. Uh, so uh, you can do text entry. So you have different options. You can do text entry, website URL or file uploads. So um, if it only lets you put in one web URL, um, I, you know, don't just upload a text file with, uh, all the URLs you want in the text file. Okay. Does that seem reasonable? Um, yeah, I'm exhausted after this week too. Um, we are not play testing your final projects because they're due tonight they're due at five i think um so uh i'm hoping that you if you needed play testing um you you're grabbing it real quick um the very least uh hey can you download my my level and make sure it runs on your computer um there was John is still uh, sending out um, playtest proof stuff apparently. But apparently, my playtest version has some problem with it, and nobody hears the music, so I'll <laughs> fix it. Well, uh, give him credit for playtesting anyway. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, so. Uh, I, I've gotten about half of you have gotten playtesting credit um, from mostly from the IGDA Game Jam games. That's fine. Works great. Um, the Those of you who haven't put in the playtesting uh, forward me emails. Um, I, I am up to date on every single playtest credit that I've gotten has been put into Canvas as far as I'm concerned. So um, please, please, please. It, yeah, it's everything's due at five. Yeah, you know, if you put it in th tonight at midnight, I'm not gonna like whatever. It's it, I'm I'm certainly not gonna be there at five oh five. Check it. Oh, I'm gonna do all all my playtest credit grading. Rah, I would be mean you get half a credit off because it was five minutes late. I'm not going to do that. Um, you know, I'm going to uh, grade um, probably all day Sunday, all day Monday, all day Tuesday. Well, not all day Tuesday because 
uh, grades are due at either three or five on Tuesday. My one happy place is that my B term is is my grad class is just continuing. So I don't have to get your grades done and immediately start thinking about the syllabus for the new class I'm teaching. It's just my grad class. Um, my B term is actually easier than my A term. So yay, hope yours is too. Um, show, show, show. Um, I had a request to uh, finish up all the uh, betas to, to watch all the rest of them with and give comments. And that seems only fair, you know, why not? Um, so let's do that. It's only four more. Um, and then I'll give a little wrap up. And then uh, uh, if there's time, um, uh, we will, oh man, that's the American Heritage Museum. This, oh, I'm just looking um, at my, uh, my channel YouTube videos because I uploaded something and I forgot there's a, so there's a, a museum in hmm, Boylston, Holden somewhere. It's like it's like a little east of Worcester and north of Worcester. And it's just a little town in Massachusetts. Uh, but it is the largest collection of tanks um, in North America. And somewhere along, the, so there, the guy, like it was a rich guy who collected tanks. Wait, is this the Collins Foundation? Yes. That's that's right near my I live in Stowe, so that's like right nearby me. It is it is I like I was looking for things to do. It was what uh a year ago, September 2019. Um I was I was like, honey, let's go, you know, Saturday, let's go. Oh, I know, because there was a World War II museum here in Framingham just down the street. It's it was behind the Dick's Sporting Goods, right? So, you know, Route 9 in Framingham is all like shopping centers. Um, and if you go behind one of the shopping centers, there was this World War II museum. Um, and I knew it was there. And I was like, oh, we I should go to that. But it's right down the street. I'll do that eventually, you know, someday, someday, someday. And then... Uh, they announced it had closed. And I was like, oh, I missed, I missed the Framingham World War II Museum. Um, should we be trying out uh, uh, each other's executables? Um, uh, I would say yes. I mean, you don't just, just find a friend here in class and say, can you download my executable and run it on your computer to make sure that it works on on somebody else's computer. Um, anyway, uh, uh, so I got freaked out that I had missed out on a World War II museum that was just blocks away, or maybe a mile and a half away from my house. So I knew that the this Collings Foundation, is, it's actually called the American Heritage Museum, um, uh, was uh, uh, in I guess where is it, Henry? Is is it's not? I don't know what town it's actually. It's like Boylston Boston. or something. I don't know. Um, some some you know little. It's in Hudson. Hudson, that's it. Which is literally the next town over for me. <laughs> okay, so so we go and um, it is a multi-million-dollar installation. I so here I have. Now I have talked this up. I, I must share this video with you. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Video link. Here we go. So it opens with, you know, you, you go into a room and there's a music, there's a movie about, you know, the founding of this place. Um, uh, to honor veterans. Really, it's because some rich guy liked tanks. 
Um, and then you 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 go to the next thing, and you're in this diorama. You're actually in a trench in World War One. Um, let me just share this with you. It's it's not long. It's less than a minute. So uh, this is the American Heritage Museum. Share. Okay. Uh, and this is this multimedia thing. France has lost an entire generation of young men due to the war. There's no glory in this. No lasting triumph. For me, there's nothing but a firm resolve to carry on, to do what we can to bring comfort and endure would we all have it better to stay back in America and not get involved? Some say yes. But our American ships were sunk by new boats. We've been attacked, and now our allies need us more than ever. Rah. Let's go kick some ass. We have tanks. miles from the North Sea to Switzerland. Many are waterlogged home, often reeking of death. From which men of valor might storm out to cross fields known as no man's land. So that, uh, so that, I mean, in, in Hudson, Mass, there's, uh, so anyway, um, uh, I was, um, you can see as I pan around that redheaded lady is my wife. Um, and she's looking kind of appalled at the whole thing. Like she's like, where the, where have you taken me? Um, because we weren't sure if this was like, like neo-fascists worshiping tanks. <laughs> because the next room over, there was a big Hitler in a car. <laughs> anyway. Uh, when museums open again, go apparently Hudson, the town, hates this place because uh, every fall they do a reenactment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's got some legal trouble for it and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and, and He's also like, just kind of a jerk. <laughs> there's tanks and helicopters roaring around and explosions, and it was a it was a residential neighborhood. <laughs> Before this place arrived so like every october apparently uh you're you're sitting home and then stuff starts exploding around you. Uh, anyway okay uh let's uh, i'm punchy uh are y'all punchy uh okay that's do 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 Okay, final Unreal level, no, we want beta. Beta version. Um, and I'm gonna get, oh no, I'm in the middle of doing something with that. Oh God, dang it. Okay, sorry. I like to think that every other teacher is just as, uh, a mess with clicking on things while you silently wait for me to get to the next thing. Um, so uh, I got to open a new window canvas and let's go to advanced storytelling. Then again, maybe not. Maybe everybody else is much more organized than I am. Uh, let's go to people and project groups. No, we want final project pairs. So where did we leave off last time? I think we left off. We had looked at final project pair or project four and we're into five. Is that right? We had looked at McKenna and Matt. We finished with McKenna and Matt and Tornado Alley. And so... Uh, let's go to speed grader. So we want, who do we want? Raul. Okay. Okay. No, Raul. So then we want 
Alexis. Uh, yeah, Alexis has it. Okay. Uh, the YouTube link. Uh, open link in new tab. Okay. Wait. Okay. Oh, yeah, this is... Did we... No, we looked at... We watched this. This is the... Um, the... Okay, we did watch Alexis and Raul's stuff, right? Yeah, Alien Museum. I think we ended on those, yeah. Yeah, okay. So we'll go to the next one. Uh, Final Project Pair 6 is Nick and William. Okay. There we go. Uh, 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 and nope. William, William, here we go. Uh, this submission is a media recording. Huh, okay. Well, this is going to be interesting. Oh, okay. Um, it, it, you uploaded it to Canvas, and it's a tiny postage stamp. Um, but it looks like I can make it big enough for I can make it full screen. So Canvas has resolution options and a full screen. Okay, I'm going full screen. Okay, so we're going to share it. See, see, this is what I start with. <laughs> so we're going to go full screen. Here we go. Woohoo! So this is the beta level recording for Nick Parker and William White. So we've reworked our level pretty much entirely since the gray box. And instead of starting in a forest, the player now starts in the middle of a ravine. So okay. the player will follow this path along. I like the arch. We have some incomplete deco scattered across. There's a root here, some plants along the way. And we've textured it to make it look like it's sort of in an arid area with sandstone mixed with some grass every now and then. And the salt textures. I just want to point out to everybody um, that... Um, this, uh, this valley, this, um, the, the textures on, uh, the, the rock, um, look much, much more realistic than a lot of the landscape textures that, that we're seeing. And I'm pretty sure that's, uh, because the material has UVs, um, that the the actual um, the the rock itself has a texture, so instead of looking kind of like a cartoonish gray, um, we actually have texture um, in every single bit of of the material. Um, Might I chime in for a moment? Yes. Uh, one extra thing. Yes. So it's actually twofold. Um, the okay. UV app helps a lot, but also using the smoothing tool on the terrain helps reduce the stretching of the texture so it looks a lot better. Okay, yes. Um, it, it really does look much better than um, uh, most every other landscape that we see. Um, uh, so I think you did a really good job there. Ravine. So the player will follow this path and upcoming is the first vista. Here is another weenie, the cherry tree in back that tells you that you want to go through the doorway that way. So the player comes down here and makes their way over to this little temple. And when the player gets to that temple, they'll start hearing some sound. Right now we have a place... place. Okay, uh, I'm not sure. So, so that... Hmm. That tree I get as being uh, the intention of being a weenie, but the wall here um, seems odd. Um, you might be better off pushing that wall down and kind of framing it in a thick forest, uh, a thick impassable thing, so that because um, this just looks like well, it looks kind of like a mistake. 
um, that that the the there's a tree behind a wall. Um, the rest of the this wall is is pretty clearly you know impassable. Um, the idea that I'm going to go through this cave and somehow get like this looks like it's going to go deep underground, like a Skyrim cave, not that it's just going to be uh, through this wall to that tree. Um, I could see if there was, you know, an arch um, that we could actually see through, um, but that's not what this is telling me. This is telling me this is a mine that's going down underground and this tree uh, is just inaccessible to me a, a, as it's built. So you might want to either uh, uh, open it up a little and, and look for kind of more uh, a garden uh, kind of gateway rather than a mine kind of gateway um, or uh, uh, I, I mean, I don't under, I, I, I'm not quite sure why you even need uh the doorway and the wall at all the the tree would pull me even without that um maybe it's a uh because you need to switch levels but you can still switch levels um anyway and when the player gets to that temple they'll start hearing some sound right now we have a place ha placeholder audio which is just a bunch of orcs talking we're going to replace it with something like maybe running water or wind something like that so the player enters the temple the other possibility is get rid of the tree entirely and make build up that orc temple as a uh, more of a temple and that's your weenie oh they come out and they see the cherry tree in the middle of this garden. okay and the player will come up here and with through the use of deco which we haven't completed yet we're going to tell the player a story of what this area is and what significance okay what significance the cherry tree has so so it's clear that we've gotten further um like like you really worked that first section and it looks good and these walls don't look nearly as good because of the stretching um you're you're probably gonna want to cover these up with uh trees that that kind of mask give me a, a foreground or or a mid mid ground um and and push these mountains back into the horizon more um i shouldn't be able to walk up to these um because they don't they look like a facade they look like fake mountains um but maybe that's that's exactly because you haven't worked them yet. So take that comment with a grain of salt. To the area. And that is pretty much everything for our I life. like the statues. There's also some roots coming from the tree all around here, but that's just... Yeah, so, so if this yeah, is... really everything. If this is the end of your, your level, then... Um, then I, I like uh, where am I where am I I want to go back this Yet. wait even further back before that that um, uh, I, I don't object to this this looks great it's this that doesn't look great this wall here. Um, and if you even just replace it with uh, a foliage that, that is impassable, um, this will still stand out, right? Because um, right now that does not look good. Um, I'd even, even if you just pull it down a little bit um, and then put trees uh, in front of it, you, you're, you've got a, a better framed tree. Um, it's just bad framing. Okay, um, but uh, the, it's clear. Uh, you know what you're doing. The stuff that um, 
that you you've worked hard on looks much better than you you know it's clear that the beginning of the level looks really good and the further we go the less you've worked on it the less uh you know the less worked it looks um and so i reserve a lot of my uh well grain of salt on my comments on the second half because I assume you're going to make them look just as pretty as the first half. Oh, okay. So let's move on. Uh, uh, uh. Do, 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 do. Okay. Now we're at Courtney and Sarah. Uh, okay. Do, do, do. I got a copy. I got a paste. Okay, there we go. Now let's get this. Share screen. There we go. Share. Okay, let's make it begins. Welcome to our beta level. This We've looks added good. some new. Uh, stuff here like a fireplace, a bed, and a window. Fireplace um, still needs. Go over here and read the note that is now changed to black font. Okay. The so, music is looping, as you can tell. Uh, uh. Let's go back to the fireplace. So that fireplace looks looks halfway there. Okay, so it looks great for what it is, um, but it needs a shelf. Um, it needs uh, a kind of um, deco around it. Like you've got good deco, in, although you ever hear of a thing called time to crate? <laughs> it's an old... Uh, it's an old way to judge first person shooters is um, uh, from the moment you start a new game, how long until you see a crate. Uh, so if this is somebody's house, do you have crates in your house? I don't have crates in my house. Um, so it's it, so it's a video game cliche to put crates around. Um, uh, so maybe think about. Welcome that. to our okay. beta level. Here we go again. We've added some new uh, stuff here, like a fireplace, a bed, and a window. Yeah, somebody um, lives here. Go over here and read the note that is now changed to black. Crops in the town have died. The water is polluted and dirty. No new food has grown. People are leaving town. There seems to be no home left, but look up upon the mountain. What do you see? There is a nature witch that lives on top. Maybe, just maybe, if you visit, she can help. Okay. Who wrote this note, and why did they put it here? Um, if you were, um, if you were going to write this note, if you lived here. And the crops have died and the water is polluted. No new food is grown. Everybody has, has left. But um, think about this. Instead of, because this feels like instructions to a player. Again, we're, we're in video game cliches rather than reality here. Um, so... Uh, tell me, I mean, you're fine up until the butt. Um, and then it's, uh, it should be at the top of the mountain, there lives a witch. I am, I, I am the last here in the town. Um, it is up to me to save it. I am going to see the nature witch, right? Um, and that way, that tells us 
why this place is empty, um, where the the person went, um, and why what's happening. Um, uh, so then the question is, who am I? Right? Who am I, the player? Um, so. Uh, uh, why am I starting here inside somebody's house, right? Um, maybe I should start um, at the entrance to the village and come upon this in the first house or start outside that. I'm a traveler. I have come to the next town uh, I, and there's no one around. The uh, first house I go into I find this. Um, so. Font. Okay. The music is looping, as you can tell. Yeah. Um, and we can go outside. Also, um, that music seems kind of happy for what it is, but okay. Change the lighting. There's still a few minor tweaks that we would yeah, have to make. I like it. Um, we it's added better. dead ground textures. Grumpy. Dead trees um, and always the water we have yet to add um, some dead fruits We're, we plan to do that um, for the final version okay uh, the the ground itself seems unnaturally flat um, could use a little noise um, you can see the eviction notices have also been turned to black font. Who are um, the landlords? We've removed the second pass due I to like the, overstuffing the issues. Flies around the lanterns. Um, I bet they came with them. Here is the abandoned house. Okay, we got another abandoned here house. Here is the note inside there. I can't read this one, it's too small. But for now, farewell. Okay, maybe one day we will return. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, I like how you're setting mood. Um, duplication is your friend, um, as as you should all know by now. Um, so wait, oh, come on. See that that um, fireplace? Why why isn't it just a dupe of the other fireplace um so uh i would if i were you i would get one really good fireplace made group it uh and then dupe it whenever i need a fireplace um i'm gonna ask you the same question i asked other people um how do plants grow inside the house there are no windows. <laughs> um, oh, there is a window. I'm wrong. And back out here, we can go but still. past the cliffs ahead sign. Okay, and cliffs ahead. We can follow the path by the dead grass. Just get a noise, get the noise uh, tool. And start on the this. parkour path. Set it really low and get some bumps in there. If you fail, it will reset you to this crate okay. at any point in the path. Okay. So I'm just cool. going to jump through it. Works for me. Give me a little blub, blub, blub noise when I fall in the water or, or an ah! <laughs> Put a little trigger box. No, I'm joking. I'm, I'm, but hey, if you want to, why not? Uh, okay, you've actually made kind of a platformer. Uh, that's cool. Uh, I got, I got no problems with this. Um, maybe so. So I just want to point out the the difference. You know how I said in the last one. The uh, the rocks looked very realistic, 
um, and most everyone else, their landscapes don't look realistic. This looks um, this looks like a 3D video game rather than that kind of more realistic look. Um, that's not a, 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 a kiss of death or anything. Um, I just want to point out that uh, un, the unreal things made in Unreal can look much better than this. Um, and you should strive to make them look better. Early simple parkour course. And then we can follow the path upwards. Okay, one other uh, little thing. And again, this is all kind of polish. Um, paths are a little um, a little indented down from not path uh, because paths are where people walk and uh, where there's no grass there so erosion uh, washes the dirt away and stuff so having the path delineated entire and this is for everybody not just you guys um, Having paths delineated entirely by materials um, is is one of the reasons why they don't look real. Um, so if you just, again, get your landscaping tool and take the time um, and push that path down a little bit and, and make it make little rivulets along it, um, it goes a long way um, to to making things look real. Enjoy the nice scenery, the sun over there, framed yep. by the trees. Looks good, looks good. We're skyrimming up the, and up the hill. Following the path upwards towards the witch. Okay, I like okay, the moving the windmill. windmill. We need that you could see from the bottom of the town. Note the lighting needs to be rebuilt. Warning. Careful Sun. of that. And up here we have a growing garden. Some magical plants. That looks unnatural. I like it. And again, just bumpify the ground here. Here's the teapot. Oh, cutscene. Which we slowed the cutscene down so it's less yeah. abrupt. And you Thank can go you. inside the witch's cottage. There's now a window in here, and there's also a note. I hate you all. What is it? Which implies the teacup puzzle part. Okay, we got a teacup puzzle. And you can go over to where the pipe is. That showed in the cutscene. And then you can see that there's logs to get there. Yeah. Okay. You can't actually fall off the logs, so it's pretty low stakes. Yeah, but I don't know that. Once you get close enough, double log. It'll tell you that you can deactivate the pipe with the X key, and when you do that, it plays a uh, short cutscene that triggers the end game condition. And that is our level. Okay. Any up there? Um, I think it's there. Uh, I, most of my comments are about polish, right? Uh, 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 uh. Uh, do chests count for time to crate? No. Is a chest a crate? No, it's a, a chest. Time to crate. Um, here. Uh, old man Murray uh, time to crate. Here we go. This is this is a classic of game humor. There you go. Old Man Murray um, was once upon a time Chet Falizek and Eric Wolpaw, uh, who both went to Valve 
eventually. Uh, you may know Eric Walpole as uh, uh, the lead writer on a little game called Portal um, and a little game called Half-Life 2. Um, actually, he wasn't the lead writer. Mark Laidlaw was, but uh, he was one of the writers at Valve. Um, so anyway, they go. Uh, they started... Um, the first anybody ever heard of Chet and Eric uh, was because uh, they started a game sales um, website uh, called Old Man Murray, uh, where basically they had a table of all the games they were selling. Um, and you know how, like, when you're, you go to a store and there's like a little description of the product their descriptions of all the products were how terrible these games were so it was like this little mini review of games they were trying to to sell but the the secret that we learned many years later was that they had gotten a case of uh, myth the fallen lords uh, which was a, a real-time strategy game back then. Um, they had gotten a case of them. I don't know how. I, I forget that part. But they had this this big pile of one game. Um, and they were like, we need to sell this game. How are we going to sell this game? Let's make a game sales site selling a bunch of games. Like, we're a store. And the only positive review of any game on their site was for Myth the Fallen Lords. So the idea was that people would come read all the terrible reviews and then say, oh, but there's one good one that's called Myth the Fallen Lords. Let's let's buy that. And you'd buy that. Um, hilariously, I purchased uh, two games from them. One myth the fallen lords and the other fallout the original fallout which they they said had problems uh but i bought it anyway um and uh i got a call from what turned out to be eric um and he's like yeah um we only have one copy of fallout left and it's a little chewed up uh, we'll give you five bucks off it. I was like, okay. So I got Eric's used copy of Fallout. <laughs> Which is how anybody ever purchased any other game than Myth the Fallen Lords. Uh, but then they started, right? They were writing, they started with these bad reviews of games, and then they started writing things like Time to Crate. Um, and hilariously, the death of adventure games about uh, the the cat mustache puzzle in Gabriel Knight, which I cite. Oh no, <laughs> they they wrote that. Um, so uh, okay, I think we have one left. Let's close these. Boop, boop. Um, okay. Uh, What's next? Uh, we got Daniel and Benjamin. Daniel. Wait, wait. Okay. Let's switch. Okay. Daniel, uh, let's open in a new window. There we go. Okay, wait. And we're going to switch to share screen. Share screen. Welcome to Postage Stamp Land, but that's okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so here we Dan. go. Dan? I'm Ben. This is our level, Tower of the Valley. 
Tower of the Valley or Valley no, of the Tower. We made some adjustments since the gray box uh, okay. version of our level. Yeah, it's we've smaller. Thank shrunk you. It, so it's a lot more easier to traverse. We've also uh, made the tableaus more visible and added more um, props and meshes to make the world a little more um, interesting. Okay. Um, and so, uh, something. Uh, so again, note this: um, the the flatness, even when you pull the smoothness of the hills, um, just go over with a low noise um, tool uh, to to add bumps, uh, and uh, you. You may want to go back into the material that you're using for grass um, and either add UV or accentuate the, the roughness of it uh, because this looks very smooth and very much like uh, a texture. I actually switched it to a completely different one since Okay, then. cool. Um, we added it in order to um, have uh, players um, be motivated to come to these tableaus is on um, these kind of piece, these note pieces, which um, no text is in them quite yet. There are some that have, but like we just you probably some don't have them, some don't. We're still writing up some um, Wait, lore and to be added in. Um, but read the notes, get the story, um, figure out the mystery behind this place. And also the main driving factor for the player is that um, the first note that you come across um, will have uh, a hint. It's from a previous explorer, and um, it's hinting at the fact that you are um, the child of uh, the first explorer, and you're coming here to find uh, your parent. The other thing you can add here is um, there are particle emitters of leaves blowing. Um, uh, that'll both give you the kind of uh, desolate look to the place you know that the the leaves are uh are blowing unchecked i don't know um but also give the place some life right that uh this is not just a static thing that there there's something here that even if it's just the wind uh that the whole place is alive so we've just seen all three tableaus in the level, the shrine, the battlefield, and the cemetery. And now we're about to head into the tower. Um, you might also, I think they're there. I, I'm not going to go back, but um, the, the various tableaus should have kind of mini weenies that pull me to them. So like, I think there was a gate that led me to the first one but some little indication that there is something of interest if I go down this path. My dog is having nightmares and making noise. And they're all speed. And so um, there's a note um, on the ground right there. Um, this one has actually um, stuff written on it. Um, and if you look up at around uh, the area, this is just kind of main entryway where they would show off prisoners and stuff like that as a form of intimidation. Okay, so I didn't get a chance to read the entire note, but whenever you're leaving notes around, um, uh, the, the question is, um, who wrote this and how did it get here? Like, what... what who are they writing to? Is it pages from their diary? Is it a, a letter to uh, someone that they need help from? And uh, the messenger never got through, so there should be a skeleton next to it. Um, I understand it's a, a device for telling the story, um, but you've got to give context for why that note is where it is. Since this was a frontier outpost that they... Uh, that the previous civilization dark, used but, to okay. control and dominate um, the okay, people the that still live here. Much better. And coming on to the um, second floor, this is kind of the jail area, more intimidation. The first thing people see when climbing up the stairs uh, is people imprisoned, and this is where they would also interrogate people. And there's um, 
cultists have now moved into the valley. If you're going to have now, notes, um, uh, that's one of the notes that we just saw. And, left and by the them. table, why not put them? They've the repurposed table. this tower and the valley the for floor. other uses. And um, that was kind of like an armory barracks area. And in here, yeah, this, um, this is the kind of. So if you step back work. and look at, um, uh, like above that there, cut um, of that doorway, both the entryway to the stairway, those, and um, all. Look at look at where my eye line is, and look at where the top of the thing is. It feels very low, um, which uh, for like a dungeon, I guess, is okay. You also should have kind of. Uh, um, a doorway, uh, even if it's just wood, uh, wood pieces and a wood cross piece, um, or rock cross piece or something. Um, cause right now it looks like, uh, uh, somebody built a wall and then took a chainsaw to the wall and cut a square out of it. Um, and that's partially because of how materials work in unreal. Um, that's why we have those kind of doorway meshes all over the place. And several different rooms have this crest. This is a crest of the royal family. And so all the significant ones, rooms are marked by... No, go back in. Go back in. Go, go back in. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It's up here too. Yeah. Also, th this looks like a negative. Like, the lighting is weird in that um, it looks like I'm looking at a photographic negative here, which is... I don't know what's going on. And that is the Royal Chambers, but it has been um, blocked off by a debris. But if you go back downstairs. Like here too. There is, um, and go into that hallway. The door is too low to get through. Um, okay. Uh, what's going on there? So if we head up the tower. The door was too um, low to go through. You can see that eventually <laughs> when you get to the top. Um, <laughs> you kind of discovered the awful truth about what happened to the previous explorer, your father. To the top. Um, oh no, yay, skeletons. Skeletons have, make have everything better. Way, and he is now, um, you know, no longer. That that's skull looks tiny. Looks like a shrunken head skull. Um, scale, scale, scale. Right? Um, it longer. Just be no careful. longer with us, and the um, big mystery is: Oh, is this going to happen to you now too? Oh no! So, uh, that's our beta. Okay. Um. Uh. Obviously. Uh. Yeah. Skeletons make everything better, and dogs, but dog skeletons make everything worse because dogs should not die. Um. Ah. Okay. Good. Uh, 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 let me just check. Uh, Final Project 9 is Isa and Henry, which is yes. where we started, right? Or uh, we Have we watched your beta? We haven't seen this on that. Okay. Um, <laughs> we are on track. D despite how th this will look more gray boxy than you might just because we've reprioritized focusing on programming things and getting specifically right like the writing side of things like we have like a bunch of notes scattered around the map but okay. we are on track to having it in like a submitted on time with a fully detailed thing don't worry okay i'm not worried about you two um although i'm surprised it's it should be uh, uh, pixel art if it's if it's Henry. <laughs> okay. Bring uh, a gimbal onto this. Oh, also. Oh. Yeah. Um, I paused very long on some of the notes, um, so you can just like skip through. Okay. Because it's <laughs> just like eight minutes or something. Okay. Let's look. Very gray boxy. That's okay. Uh, I can't read that. It's too blurry, but I assume it says something pithy and wonderful. Yeah. Oh, and interesting. we're also um, increasing the subtitle size. So yeah, like... they should, they appear very different on my screen. Oh, really? It's funny. It's it's the nature of the um 
the resolution of the video. Yeah, wow, they're they're huge on for me. Like they're nowhere near that tiny. That's huh. interesting. Okay, that makes more sense. <laughs> I was like, these subtitles are so small. Shrub novel beats around the bush. Oh, this is where I'm supposed to. Yeah, that was fine. I read slow. I'm talking. Uh, chapter one. Okay, I like that. It's these are crumpled pieces of paper. Um, the the one thing I'd say is um, instead of totally flat notes sitting around, maybe they're they're balls balled up pieces of paper instead. That I that the, when I click on them, then I get the unwrapped thing. But that's polished. That's we do have an alternative to them in another area. You'll see. <laughs> okay. Uh, and this is the temple of the book. And I'm going to skip the note. And this is Kidland. We've got little teddy bears and such. Mom, pop, me. Ah, it's so pink. Not far off from the final colors, actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that looks good. It looks like a thing. Mom popping me. And we're... Dad's off by himself. Dad's... Oh! oh rah! So this is The Shining from Danny's point of view. <laughs> Uh, dad, dad is an alcoholic writer, like all writers. Did I mean? Oh, uh, I ran out of scotch last night, and there's no whiskey in the house anymore. I am sad. Okay, we went down the thing. We got more notes to read. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. Okay. What is that? What? what no, wait. What was it okay. before it was a note? Um, it's a paper airplane. Oh, okay. The, 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 yeah, I'm not airplane. sure that <laughs> reads. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that, that was the debug version. Yeah, we have the actual paper airplanes in now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's little triangles. <laughs> I'm like, uh, they look like uh, thorns shot out by a carnivorous plant. Which would be a, yeah. Pachoo, pachoo. Wow, long note. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, I'm saving these for later. Yeah, so uh, um, as you you preface this whole thing with, it looks a little gray boxier than, so if you hadn't said that, I'd be saying it's a little scary that your beta looks like a gray box. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. it looks like a gray box um, with with very detailed notes and writing. Okay, we're going up. I'm more interested about the end. We got another thing. Now we get to go through the book. Were those here before or are they new? There's uh, some notes that appear. Yeah. Okay. Is there a, a way to differentiate the new ones from the old ones? Do they do they stop being sparkly once I've read them? No, no, that would be it might because I'm gonna miss some. I guarantee it, it's you. just the, the two there. That's okay, it. okay, here we are. This is when we find out that the author took an axe to his family, 
so he could finish his book. Different story. Message in a bottle. Good luck, your favorite ex-author. Yay, happy ending. It's like The Shining, only a happy ending. Finish the book, George. Yeah, and then I show both endings. I edited them together. Okay. Be, uh, you know, I'm just spitballing here, but if uh, I take the thing out here, then George comes and his name's not George. It's Cornelius. Cornelius chases me with an ax to get me off his island. That would be fun. I'm just the end okay and what's the other end okay here we go yeah yeah okay same note i'm gonna leave him alone And I get to go back to the bookstore. Mm -hmm. Back to my life, having left this author alone. Okay, so, um, so what I, I just just a comment. Um, the look of like that bookstore, that that first place. Um, versus imagination land you know inside cornelius's head i guess um uh you might want to go super realistic with the bookstore um and less realistic with imagination land yep um so that'll but that doesn't mean you can skimp on um the the kind of the materials and the stuff you use there um it just means that they're they're different see mm -hmm. what i'm saying yep. um so um i it's hard to 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 talk about the kind of environmental art uh but it in terms of gray box that looks really good right that's that's complete and of a of a piece. Um, it tells a story. Um, it gives me things to do, and it even gives me a decision at the end. It's a very good little piece. Um, now make it look good. Mm -hmm. that, that's all I have to say. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, Thank you, Dean. Sure. Um, Freddie Fosbear, stuffed animals. Um, okay, so, um, so I just want to talk a little bit about um, the course in general, and then we'll call it a day, we'll call it a term, we'll call it a class. Um, the, the, the principles you've, we've gone over in the class um, aren't, aren't just for uh, first person realistic stuff. Um, there's, uh, so I, I'm thinking uh, last year, um, uh, one of the MQPs was Call of Karen, right? It won best MQP, right? Um, and uh, the Call of Karen is uh, you're a 50s housewife and um, you have to clean the house and cook dinner um, as your your house is slowly overtaken by uh, elder gods. Yes, Kate Olgin made that. Yes, Raul. Um, and um, one of the reasons that that can work um, is because the level design um, has to be grounded in reality. So 
Uh, we know where the living room is. We know where the bedroom is. We know where the dining room is. Um, and this house, um, it has all the things that you think of in those rooms. And then we can start twisting it and um, making it weird, right? So the, the level design there, it's a, a very simple, we made a house. Um, the more real you can make it, the more properties of 1950s house that you can give it, um, the better it is. Uh, so, so making places is probably the first half of this course, all the architecture stuff, what makes uh, a library a library, what makes a house a house, what makes a shop a shop um, should be applicable to whatever kind of uh, level you make uh, for whatever kind of game. Uh, then this, this kind of second half is how do we, um, how do we tell stories with place, with space? Um, and yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of having a crisis of faith, um, of late, uh, because I always say I like stories in games. That's why I play games. And uh, many, many of you say you like stories in games. Um, and more and more, maybe it's because I'm getting old and jaded, um, but I find myself more and more ignoring the stories in games uh, and just playing the game. Um, I think I was telling my class yesterday, I'm, I'm playing Battletech, giant robot fighting game. Uh, or maybe I was telling one of my project groups. You mentioned it to us. It was, it was me and Zinzin. It was we you and Zinzin. Okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, I just, I, I could care less about the story in, in Battletech. Um, there is one. I could, I could talk to people. Um, I ju I'm just there for the the giant fighting robots, but after I said that, I I I reflected more. I thought more about it, um, and the story that I don't care about is the one that's in the menus. The one where you know I go to the the mech bay and I talk to the mechanic, or I go to the navigation place and I talk to the starship navigator um, because it's it's flat text on a screen. I click on the person and text pops out and I, I click on a response and it's, it's a basic conversation thing. The stories I care about are in the missions. Right? So uh, for instance, um, I get I got one where there's a spy, right? Um, and this spy, I am being sent on an assassination mission. I have to go um, to this base, find this spy, and kill him, right? Uh, and of course, on the way to the base, there's a bunch of giant robots who are trying to stop me from getting to the base and they delay me just long enough so that the spy can get in the biggest, meanest mech or, that I've ever seen and come out and uh, uh, fight me because that's the nature of the game. Um, but as soon as I do a certain amount of damage to him, uh, he tries to run and then it becomes this race of can I blow him up before he gets to a certain spot on the map um, and that little story is compelling and interesting and fun right so um, I find myself more and more 
uh, interested in the the little stories that are told uh, through the space of the game, and less and less uh, in in the the kind of text and the backstory. Um, and let me just tell you, I am looking, and I can see one, two, three, four, five Halo novels on my shelf that I have read. So, and I have only played Halo 1 and 2. I have spent more time reading Halo novels than playing Halo games. Um, so, but that's the old me. Like, and, and maybe that's why I don't care so much about the text stories anymore. Because... The Halo novels are not good. And I've invested time and energy into like the Halo lore. For what? They they keep there there is never an end. It keeps going. They'll they'll manufacture some new thing. Um so uh it is the environmental storytelling which is more difficult. Um, more kind of visual it's a different kind than just reading words um, that that more or less compels me now um, and I'm hoping that y'all uh, have have got I mean there, there's so much more to it than uh, we can get through in, in seven weeks but you've got the basics right the weenie, the tableau, um, and the vista. Uh, Nick says uh, some of the newer novels aren't bad, but yeah, a lot of them are just a lot of sci-fi jargon. Garg- I have Contact Harvest. I have read Contact Harvest. I cannot tell you what Contact Harvest was about. Just saying. I don't know. Um, I... I Reach Falls. <laughs> That's what I remember. Reach Falls. Um, the the actual creation of the Master Chief is actually really, really icky. Um, they they haven't. I just, I remember they haven't figured out clones enough to make viable clones but you can we can clone you and know that 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 person will get sick and die of like horrible cancers within months so what they do is they steal they they steal um promising children to to exper- to turn into super soldiers and they substitute clones reach falls and fall of reach contact harvest is about the first contact with the covenant oh yeah i don't remember the, this is what i remember so they're they're horrible people they have they they steal they're like they're like elves the fairies they steal children for use in their super soldier program and they replace them with clones that will die of horrible cancers within months so that the parents don't know that their children have been stolen um all of it's horrible anyway so uh you've got the basics now hopefully um i hope you incorporate this kind of storytelling in your future games um (laughs) Halo was my first big game series I ever played. Um, let me just tell you, I've I've read the Mass Effect novels too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a mistake. I did not read the last, the Mass Effect three novel because it was apparently so bad that um, there was like it was there were petitions there were. There were angry internet mobs because 
the person who wrote the third Mass Effect novel um, didn't know anything about Mass Effect. So he was just making stuff up and people were like, but Krogan's can't do that. You know, um, you saw Halo as a kid. It's a Garfield game. Oh my God. Um, I have watched the uh, Halo Forward Unto Dawn uh, Young Halo Kids uh, uh, TV series. Garfield Reach. <laughs> um, so anyway, okay. So um, I like stories. Um, I, I, I read every day. I read novels. Um, but it's kind of a different thing. Um, I, I think I've been burned by uh, complicated stories um, in video games so many times to know that they, they come to nothing. Hey, I'm, here's a treasure. Wait, wait, wait. Let me get it. Let me get it. Where is it? Uh, 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 uh. Come on. I know it's here somewhere. Now I can't find it. Gosh darn it. Is this it? Ha ha! Lord of Souls by it's an Elder Scrolls novel. It is the second of two Elder Scrolls novels written uh, at the time of Oblivion. Based on the award-winning Elder Scrolls series, Lord of Souls is the second of two exhilarating novels that continue the story from Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion named 2006 Game of the Year by numerous outlets, including Spike TV, the Golden Joystick Award, and the Associated Press. Um, I read the first one back during Oblivion and threw the second one on my Amazon wish list and forgot about it. And last year for Christmas, my niece bought this for me. Um, which means I have to read it, but it like the first one ends with like a cliffhanger. I seem to recall, but I don't recall anything else about it. Um, so that means I have to read the first one again to understand this one. I don't know where the first one is It's in here somewhere. I think could be anywhere. Anyway, um, so uh, uh, Thursday or, or the Friday before uh, Halloween, October thirtieth, I'm uh, charged with uh, doing a thing on Discord, uh, and that is going to be. Remember, I told you. Uh, uh, I got a box here. Let me show you the box. Okay, I got this box in the mail. Um, it is a mysterious package. Uh, here, can you see this? 
I don't I don't know if you can see that. It says JJ Soft Sofico Lumber Mill Inc. I think that's the wood. It's actual wood. Um, whatever is in this box will tell us a story. Um, we're going to do this on Friday, October 30th. Um, I believe it will be spooky. Uh, I I got a package from J.J. Abrams. Uh, no. Um, this is a mysterious package, though. Um, it Dean, will did tell you us ever, Did you ever open that bottle with the wax on it and the demon things that no. we talked about last semester? Yeah, no. Um, it <sighs> is. Remember, I was waiting for Valpurgisnacht to open. Oh, right. And Valpurgisnacht was April 30th. What happened in March? Uh-huh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Damn. So there is a jar with a demon in it on my table in my office at WPI that I can't access. It could already be out. It could. <laughs> because we had to perform the ritual to seal it back in. Um, well, that was... So the the jar is sealed with wax and part of me just wants to open the damn thing up and see what's in there because when you shake the jar it it rattles so there's something in there i don't know what's in there a demon see that's that's how they get me they're like don't ever open this this bottle right well so the the it, it comes with all these instructions on how to do this uh, uh, ritual that um, reseals. It has to be resealed every so many years. Um, and it was time to reseal the bottle. Um, but if you do it on Valpurgisnacht, well, somewhere in there it says, don't ever, 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 ever do it on Valpurgisnacht. So, of course, that would, you know, um, that was when we were going to do it just to see, um, the other, my other plan was I was going to recruit students to do the ritual with me to reseal it so that if something bad happened, I would be behind the students. See, cause you guys, you have no fear. You, you, it'll be fine. Right. Everyone knows students are resistant to demons. Yes. That's what grad students are for. Um, That's why I don't get any students. <laughs> um, uh, actually, uh, isn't isn't it the Lovecraftian thing that the the professor has disappeared, and now uh, his his daughter's fiance is is trying to find him, um, and and retrace his the steps of his research before. Um, uh, well, before they get married. Um, uh, you'll be fine. Sold our souls to our work. We don't have anything to give the demons. Um, it, I provide salt and candles. It'll be fine. Um, but this is um, the title of this mysterious package is... Uh, the buried puppet. So there's a there's a the puppet from Goosebumps is in that box. I, I'm I'm guessing there's going to be a creepy ass puppet in there. Um, and we're going to tell a story with it. <laughs> I'm excited by it. So, uh. uh I will see y'all on Discord. I will be looking for your finals. Um, uh, I think you've all done uh, uh, good work this term. Um, I'm sorry I, I, I haven't been on top of the grading. Um, we're all a little overwhelmed. I forgive you for your faults as you forgive me for mine. Um, 
I, but I have been giving you feedback, just not as a number, right? I've been telling you what's good and what's not. Um, so just like, uh, uh, nope, no, thank you. <laughs> um, so uh, uh, if you, I will post this once again in the, the YouTube thing and go back and look over uh, me watching your your betas if you still have uh, questions or comments um, and uh, John should be available right up until five hopefully um, any other questions about handing things in I seem to uh, people are worried about handing things in um, I don't think canvas can accommodate full unreal levels which is why i say put it on a google drive or a, a um, dropbox or what have you and put the link uh yes just forward me the play test emails um and you get points uh and uh if anybody still has uh if i've told you to resubmit any uh uh, tutorial videos, please get those in and send me an email saying I resubmitted because otherwise uh, just through sheer overwhelming the original grade that I gave you will stand. Um, so don't do that to yourself. Uh, okay, so it is now 3.30. That gives you all 20 minutes to go off and fill in your course evaluations go fill in go find that email right now um and uh thank you all for a good term um i as usual enjoy watching your levels um and seeing your stuff um even though i don't put numbers on them um thank you all um, and have a good four day weekend. That is not quite a good break. <laughs> you too. Thank you. I'll be great. Thanks, Dean. I'll be grading. Thanks, Dean. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Play hey, Dean. a video hey, game Dean. this weekend. <laughs> yes. Hey, Dean. Yeah. Uh, can we go to Discord afterwards? Uh, we need to talk to you about something. Sure, sure. I'll uh, see He's you in over trouble. in brighter days. Mm -hmm. Thanks, okay. Dean. Okay. Bye bye.